Hello guys, my name is Blue Digit, and today we're going to be going into three random SCPs. Now, I want to start the series off with a bang. Um, first off, I have a random generator that I use for um, SCPs, right? Now, I always write them down here, so I'll be able to at least give you the name, but other than that, I don't know what I'm saying. So, if I give some mis uh, misinformation, or I say something that, you know, doesn't uh, grammatically work, forgive me, I ain't the best at reading. But, I hope you have some fun with this, I'm gonna go over my thoughts and everything, and I hope you guys enjoy these three random SCPs. Now again, this is a new series, man, so if you enjoy this, please tell me down in the comments below, but let's go. SCP-365. Now, this one I looked up, and it's called the Pool Noodle. That's all it gave me, so let's move on. Um, SCP-365 Euclid. Um, blah, 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 blah. SCP-365 is to be stored in a storage locker at storage site 23. SCP-365 must be kept away from any body of water except for testing purposes. SCP-365 is to be kept in a um, testing pool at all times. The door to the pool is to be locked and guarded by one security guard. See blah blah blah. Um, experiment requests must be approved by a level 3 researcher. Okay. Um, description. SCP-365 is a green pool noodle made of polyethylene foam. Okay. Um, it by itself it displays no unusual properties and is physically identical to a typical pool noodle. Okay, um, of similar size. SCP-365's unusual properties manifest only when it is placed in a body out of water. When a subject completely submerges in said body of water, they become unable to get out. Subjects to report a sense of dread and describe themselves in an infinite sea, swimming endlessly in a direction and finding only more water. See audio log 36503. Um, it is important to note that to outside observers, the subject simply seems to be flailing in place. <laughs> what the? Okay. Um, this is actually really cool. The only way to remove a submerged person from the water is to remove SCP-365, uh, negating its effects. All other methods of rescue have failed. Cables and ropes have exhibited an unnatural resistance and snapped. What the? F okay. Drainage systems have failed, and human intervention has led to... Oh, it doesn't tell you. Oh, God. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, so then we got anadium... Anadium? Adenum-dum? dum dum I can't fucking read. Um, 365-01. Um, um, SCP-365 was, uh, discovered in blank blank on blank blank blank. Oh, so it gives you... So it was in, um, the 19-somethings. So it was... Okay, it was actually a while ago, though. Um, retrieval personnel found it at the something uh, public pool along with the bodies of something civilians. Oh my god. Because SCP-365's properties were unknown at the time, something agents lost their lives. SCP-365 was eventually found and removed from the pool, and carbon monoxide from an improperly maintained water heater was used as a cover story. Holy shit. Um... And then SCP-365-02, um, um, on something in the 2000s, okay, researcher Blank Blank discovered that hallway 19 of storage, uh, storage site 23 was flooded. Notice water link, uh, leaking from SCP-365 storage locker at a rate of 5 liters per minute. She quickly notified Dr. Blank, who opened the locker to find SCP-365 producing water from its holes. SCP-365 was sub um, subsequently moved to its testing pool, whereupon the flow of water uh, stopped. SCP-365's containment procedures have been changed accordingly. Holy shit! That's a good one. That's actually a really good one. Okay, so so basically, if you guys don't understand it, which you probably should by now, it's really easy and simple. But basically, it's a pool noodle, right? And um, <laughs> wow. The, the the thing is, when it's out of water, it's it's safe. You know, what I mean, you can basically touch it and do whatever. But um, when it's in water, basically anyone that's in it obviously has issues like mentally, and you know they're put into this psychotic idea that. They can't get out, and it's almost like an illusion that the pool noodle causes. But here's the thing that really bothers me, that gets me freaked out about it. So, it doesn't say that it's alive, but like, you know, at the very end there, when it says that, you know, it actually is starting to create water around it, it's almost like, is this thing 
actively trying to kill? And how much water do you have to be in? Like, do you have to be fully submerged for it to, like, do stuff? Or, like, can only a little bit of water, when it's in it with you, cause this effect? So, it's very interesting, very cool. Um, I don't know. I, like, for being very simple like this, like, I actually kind of like this one. I, I don't like it when it gets so scary or, like, too, you know, informational that it's just not enough to work with and it just gets boring. I don't like them when they're too short and it's like, okay, whatever. This one's perfect for me. Um, I would probably rate this maybe like a 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10. Very awesome. Like, I, I love this. Really good, really good. Um, move on, let's move on to the next one. All I gotta say is that, <laughs> forgive me for not being able to pronounce half the shit. <laughs> I, I, I'm, not, I'm not the best at reading, man. <laughs> Alright, so moving on. This is SCP-740. Um, now this one, from the name I got, was the Hindenburg Photograph. Um, don't know anything else, so let's read it. Um, so, item, SCP-740. Object class safe. Um, special containment procedures. SCP-740 can be safely stored in its envelope in a security deposit box. Researchers testing SCP-740 must wear gloves at all times. Description. SCP-740 is a uh, slightly dirty color, uh, color corrected Polaroid photograph depicting the May 6th, 1937 explosion of the airship LZ-129 Hindenburg at Lake Hurst Naval Station, um, Na uh, uh, Naval Air Station, New Jersey. The Polaroid has been determined to be a photograph taken of the original. Um, SCP-740's anomalous traits manifest when it is viewed while in contact with the skin. The subject touching or holding the photograph will hear the sounds of explosions and people screaming. Subjects report difficulty in taking their eyes off the photograph while under its influence. Subjects holding the object typically report their inability to uh, freely release their grip as being very distressing. Many subjects have um, undergone emotionally breakdowns, uh, emotional breakdowns as SCP-740's effects progress. After one minute of holding and looking at the photograph, the subject's body temperature will begin to rise, accompanied by a sensation of warmness. The intenseness of the warmth, as well as the volumes of the auditory hallucinations, will continue to increase so long as the subject looks at the photograph. Breaking eye contact will prevent the sensations from intensifying until eye contact is re-established. The sens um, sensation of physical... Is that a sensation? Cessation? I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. <laughs> um, a physical contact will cause the effect to reset to the initial stage, should the object be handled again. Okay. Um, the subject will begin to emit smoke after a period of time, before two, um, between two and four minutes, and burst into flames shortly after. Um, time of combustion is directly correlated to the subject's size and weight. This flame will consume upwards to 90% of the subject's body mass and is proven fatal in all cases. The fire also consumes SCP-740, which will slowly resort itself to the original condition after uh, over the next 5 to 18 hours. Holy shit! Oh, there's an interview. You, I'm not sure we should read this. Um, oh shit, this is long. Let's read it. Let's, let's go for it. Is there more? Is there more? No, this is it. Okay, let's read it, I guess. Wow. Okay. Shit. Um, so, I'm just going to do, um, I guess I'll just read it. Yeah, let's just, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Um, interviewed. Agent M. Interviewer. Dr. E. Forward. Standard interview conducted within 48 hours of SCP uh, procurement. Agent M has been employed by the Foundation for a blank amount of years and retrieved for, um, and retrieved or secured something SCPs in that time, of which the retrieval of SCP-740 was his sixth leading a, um, retrieval team. Please state in your own words what happened during the recovery assignment. I was out to recover the skip, um, and the photo from the f home of a Mr. Something something. Um, it came to our attention when Mr. Blank tried unsuccessfully to sell at an, aux uh, at an auction, and I'd been keeping tabs on it for about three weeks prior. Um, what prevented his selling from it? The auctioneer spontaneously combusted. I mean, the official COD was smoke inha an inhalation, but that's what happened. I see. Please continue. Anyways, after Mr. F 
recover the photo, he started bringing in a bunch of people to look at it, trying to sell it again, but by the time I visited his home, he was all but giving it away. And no one took it. When you hear what happened, you'll understand why. After I got authority to approach for the buy, I took a team out to the retrieval site. It was considered a low risk retrieval, so they stayed out of sight. Back down his driveway while I knocked down uh, his front door. We arranged the meeting for a quarter to two, and it was March blank blank. He had a real nice place, huge New England mansion. He welcomed me in, gave me a seat, offered me some brandy, which I declined. He was real old, real thin, wrinkly, but really animated. Talked with his hands a lot. How did the incident occur? Yeah, well, he made small talk for like 10 minutes until I asked about the photograph, and then he acted like he'd forgotten that's why I was here. He goes and gets it, brings it back in an envelope, and hands it to me. He hesitated, though, and gave me this weird look. It was like he was trying to read my mind or something. Anyways, I, I slid it out, and there it was, a Polaroid of the Hindenburg disaster. First thing I, I did was ask him how he managed to capture the explosion with a camera made decades after it happened. And he tells me it's a photo of a photo, and I start hearing it. Hearing what? Explosions. F fire. People. Men. Women. Children. Screaming in pain and terror. It was like I was just sucked into that photo. I couldn't look away. Then he leans forward and that breaks my concentration. Like I'd forgotten I could look up at all. He's given me that look again. And he says, you hear them too, don't you? I said, yeah. Then he shakes his head like he's disappointed. You're all the same, blast it. That's exactly what he said. Do you know what he meant by that? Yeah. He went on about how everyone he ever showed the photo to could hear things. I asked if he did too, and he said no. Then he reaches to take it back. This is when the incident occurred. He says, no son, it's deemed you unworthy. Give it here. And I told him in no strong words, I was leaving it with him. Even mentioned the briefcase of money I would brought, but he wasn't having it. He goes, I've watched men burn to death because they're not worthy. Give it to me now. He lunges at me, knocks over my chair, real strong for an old guy. Please, continue. I, I didn't. There was no prior intel the guy was a skip himself, or he'd been coming back with me too. I have followed protocol, called in my team, but the voices in my head, the, the photo I couldn't let go of, and there was a fire coming out of his eyes and off his bald, I just panicked, okay? I've been doing this for years, but I just freaked the hell out. Drew my weapon, fired, but what, three times four? The record indicates three shots. No, I don't remember. Anyways, I, I immediately called it in, grabbed the envelope, and left the house. I was also feeling really hot, even though it was pretty cold. March in New England and all. Is this when the house ignited? Yeah. By the time I'm outside, there's smoke coming out of the roof. Once my team shows up and pries my fingers off the skip, the whole thing's in flames. We had to stand way back. I couldn't help standing back. I didn't want to be anywhere near it. I know only one way Doc, judge a man. I saw the forensics report. And that's by the you know what they said? What did they say? They placed the ignition point right where the old coot landed after I shot him. His body put the whole place up in three fucking minutes. Hey, Jesus. Thank you, Agent. That'll be enough. End of log. Closing statement. Agent M was reminded to uh, remanded to psychiatric evaluation um, for three, month, uh, three months to treat mental trauma and acute uh, pyrophobia not previously noted in his psychological profile. After um, anesthetics and amnesthetic, amnesty, I can't fucking read. I can't fucking read. Um, failed to cure the condition. Agent was reassigned to a clerical position. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So, 
pretty simple. I think you guys understand this. Basically, it's an SCP that if you hold it for too long, obviously, then it starts having various effects. Kind of like the pool noodle when you're within around a certain area of it. It does stuff to you. Kind of boring to me, frankly. Um, And I was going to give this a low score. Because, you know, there's a lot of SCPs where it's like, oh, you touch it, it does this, da da da. And the last one I gave a good score because it was very original. I mean, how the hell do you make a pool noodle scary? You know what I mean? Um, this one kind of is just. It, I, I found it kind of boring at first because it's just a photo. I mean, even like Goosebumps episodes have, like, you know, the idea of a haunted photo. But here's the thing that got me when it said the person literally is just engulfed in flames, that got me. I'm like, okay. And then basically, if you're touching it, it'll mess with you. Now, it'll really easy to mess with it because, you know, you, as long as you have gloves on, you can kind of not have the effects of it. But that, that's kind of freaky, man. That's really that's really freaky knowing that, you know, something like that can happen. And um, I, I really enjoy the, uh, the log. The log kind of helped me enjoy it a little bit more. But, um... I guess, I guess it wasn't as, um, enjoyable to me just because of the fact that, like, it didn't really feel like there was much danger behind it. It was just a very interesting object, and it was kind of boring at that. So, honestly, I think I'll give this maybe a 5 out of 10. It's not a bad story. It's just meh to me. Um, the pool noodle was fucking great. That's all I can say. 5 out of 10! 5 out of 10! So... Alright guys, so we're on to our last one, and I hope you guys are ready for a good one. Alright guys, thank you so much for actually staying this long. If you have already, then please, if you will, sub and help the channel out. That'd be awesome. Comment down what you'd like to see for the next video, or maybe just another one of these. But here's our last one, and this one, I actually had to look up the name. Um, so, this is SAP 090 and apparently it's called Apoco Rubik's Cube. So, obviously it's an evil Rubik's Cube. I don't know anything about that. Let's read it. So, item, SCP-090, object class, Keter, first one. Um, SCP containment procedures. Artifact is to be held in a secure bunker in a facility at site blank and consists, uh, consistent, can't fucking read, constantly monitored by approved class D personnel. The object's new arrangement is to be imaged every time it shifts. New arrangements are fed into the facility's class OT supercomputer. Division Chief is to be notified uh, of all changes and current estimates uh, every half hour. No personnel is to touch SAP-090 except under blank blank blank. AXA security level has been created for monitoring SCP-090. Non-AXA personnel found in the facility will be terminated. Shit. Um, description, SCP-090 was located and retrieved in blank blank on April 10th blank. Um, prior to retrieval, SCP-090 has been located in a chamber at the nearby cathedral. SCP-090 was removed, the cathedral burned, six months and um, the priests were terminated. SCP-090 has been uh, located at site blank since retrieval. Object's in, uh, initial location prior to the cathedral is unrecorded. SCP-090 is a black cubic structure, 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters, made of an unknown ceramic material. Object is classified as indestructible, following tests outlined in document 090B. Each side is to be divided into 10,000 individual squares, an arrangement similar to a Rubik's, uh, Rubik's Cube. Okay. Um, each square has been part of a design etched into the surface. Etching glow, um, etchings glow white. Um, unknown internal structure causes the realignment of a single row or column every 2.8 seconds. Vague records of the object's alignments have been kept since, wow. 1242 CE, um, but those kept before 1533 CE have been lost. Modern technology has allowed the exact alignments to be imaged and recorded, as well studied. Segments are divided by a thin white line unless they are aligned correctly with the square directly adjacent to them. There are 22 correct alignments on this object's um, surface currently. See blank 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 for the complete current object alignment. 
um, D0, blah, 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 is currently the only alignment of the three adjacent segments on SCP of, uh, 090. Blank, 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 and blank, blank, blank are the four segment alignments. Um, there are also six segment align, uh, six saying, what the fuck? Okay, basically it's just saying there's a bunch of segment alignments. Um, full item completion has been hypothesized to cause an unparalleled disaster to occur. Okay, interesting. Full item completion has, oh no, I already read that. Um, AXA security level personnel should see document 090B. Um, experiment notes. Observation is going well. We have managed to develop a system to record and analyze the shifts in the cube almost as quickly as they occur. No correla uh, correlation between shifts and any world events have been found yet. Next experiment. We have observed an a six segment alignment today on the first side. It was noted and passed without incident. Two hours later, a research assistant returned from the break room with news that a tsunami had occurred in the Indian Ocean and caused hundreds of thousands of deaths and extensive property damage. No correlation is currently known, but we will make note of it. Experiment 3. After our... It's not actually 3, but you know, I'm just, I'm just going down the list. <laughs> um, after our 120th alignment on 4th side of the cube and the 120th accident report in the lab, we are designing... Um, designating? Sorry. Uh, the 4th side as local and will implement safety measures tomorrow. Staff are discouraged from making bets regarding the outcome of the alignments. Um, Next experiment. A six alignment, al uh, a six segment alignment was recorded this morning on a local side. Um, as safety precautions, site blank was evacuated. Two hours later, a containment breach occurred, but resulted in no loss of life due to the, due to the, um, due to the evacuation. Um, object, the object determined to predict events, not cause them. First side designated as global. Upgrade to Euclid status requested. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Um, we stepped up our experiments today by attempting to modify the cube itself. When D-Class personnel attempted to make a shift, SCP-090 immediately created a 10-segment alignment of its own accord near the top left corner of the local side. Exactly two hours later, SCP blank broke containment and, oh, agent blank and blank were also lost during the incident. Recommend uh, recommend force shift testing of SCP-090 postponed. Upgrade to Keter status approved as SCP-090 is obviously capable of causing events of its own accord. Object may be sentient. Okay. This is a pretty obvious one, but um, I'm not sure if I like it. I think it's kind of boring. This one's very boring. So, um, basically, this is a Keter, and I, I just want to go over, like, class object, like, you know, how what that means. It doesn't mean it's more dangerous if it's Keter. Usually it is. Usually, but that doesn't mean it's more dangerous. Um, if it is a safe class, it also doesn't mean that it's actually, like, not gonna hurt you. It could hurt you. Um, what it means, though, is that it's understanded and it can be contained. That's what it means. So, it can hurt you, but it, it is contained and it is, like, fully understood. Euclid, is, it's mostly understood, but there's still things to learn about it, and Keter, it's like, there's nothing known about it. So, I just want to make this clear. Now, clearly, there's more to be learned about this um, SCP, and it's, it's basically just an evil Rubik's Cube. It's like, okay, whatever. Um, I, I, I like just wonky things that are fucking scary, because, you know, it's like, there's a reason why Five Nights at Freddy's is fucking scary. It's because we're used to it, and then these fucking animatronics start moving and shit. It's like... You're, ta you're basically taking our childhood safe haven and fucking us over. That that's what you're doing. But, but, um, with this, it just it just doesn't work for me. Because it's like, you know, you, you, you can maybe do the same thing with like, I don't know, fucking guitar, right? It's a haunted guitar and you play this certain segment and then, holy shit, the fucking world blows up. It's like, you know, it's just fucking, it's too stupid to me. It's too stupid. Um, it, it's, it's, it just seems too lazy to me. Um, I, I like how they try doing it with a Rubik's Cube, and I enjoy how the description says it was from a uh, cathedral, so you could tell that maybe there was cultist things going on with this, and people are trying to mess with it, because maybe it could, you know, be our messiah, this object, right? And I think that's very cool how they add that in the uh, description, but other than that, it's just, really, it's just a Rubik's Cube that maybe you can predict where, um, 
in the world or where like you know these evil events can happen if such things were to happen and i think it's kind of cool i think that's really cool and uh, i enjoyed that so um other than that though i mean i don't know i don't like this one this one's just kind of boring to me i thought it was very boring not that uh that well done i would probably give it a uh a three out of ten because you know if it's actual complete garbage i'll give it a two but like you know like this wasn't the worst it's just i didn't like it that's it i just thought it was very lazy and just nah yeah, you know what I mean? So, um, the other two were amazing, though. So, you know, other, overall, like, these weren't bad. These weren't bad. I just, you know, I didn't like this one the most. So, you guys, tell me what you guys lot, uh, thought about the other SCPs down in the uh, comments, please. I enjoy this a lot, actually. So, if you guys do, please let me know. Um, if not, then, you know, obviously, we won't have to do the series anymore. It's up to you guys. But, um, tell me what you guys would be interested in. Maybe other video ideas. Um, what other SCPs you might want to see. And um, all I want to say is maybe subscribe so we can reach our goal of, I don't know, maybe like 4,000. That'd be pretty dope. But, um, yeah, smile, keep your head up, maybe add a like, and um, fight for a future so bright, guys. I have so much for your eyes. Please, 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 please see me in the next video, and I will see you guys later. Bye, guys. Whoop!